and for this tutorial you're going to need to have your little bit of cardboard that you got from Cambridge. It, um, it has a serial number on it which we're going to use for this tutorial. You'll also need to make sure that you know your Caroline Chisholm College email address. In this example I'm actually going to be registering one of my students, Emily Baxter, and I will show you how it works, but you'll need to put in your own details when we go through your case. Okay, so for starters we need to be on this website, which is the Cambridge Go website, and we need to start the registration. So I'm going to show you the actual website up here, and you'll see it's just there in the URL bar, okay? and it's um, type it in https colon slash slash www dot cambridge dot edu dot au slash go slash login you need to type this into your URL bar and uh, teachers at this point you might want to pause the video so that students can do this because I'm going to go straight on Okay, so once you've typed that in, you should come to this website here, and the first instruction that we have here on this side of the page is please take a few minutes to register, which we're going to do. So as a registered user, you can access online resources for printed textbooks you've purchased, interactive textbooks, and teacher support material. So I'm going to hit Start Registration, and I'm going to go through the process of registering for Emily. Okay, so it asks you the question, are you a teacher or student? And we're going to need to select student. Okay, now it's going to ask you for your email address at this point. And the one that we're going to use is your Caroline Chisholm College email address. And it's important that you use this address because uh, this is the where your um, verification code is going to go and um, this will help you later on when you need to log in again. Okay, so I'm going to put in Emily's address. Now I've got it here on logged in here and sh her address happens to be E. Baxter at Caroline Chisholm College. Okay, there it is. And if you know your address, you can actually just grab it from up there, which I'm going to do. So I'm going to just copy that. That's her address. I'm switching back now to the Cambridge screen. I'm going to type it in here, or actually, in my case, I'm going to paste it in. Okay, so either type it or paste it, but make sure you spell it all correctly. Caroline Chisholm especially needs to be spelled correctly. Okay, it's going to ask for a password. Now, I'm going to create one for Emily, uh, which I'm not going to tell anyone here, but I will, of course, tell Emily her password. Okay, and it says to help keep your account safe, please choose a question and provide an answer that only you know. Um, now, I am actually going to leave that blank for now okay but I recommend that you put your own security question in so um, in this case what was the name of your first pet it's a good one because if you had a first pet this will help you to access your account if you forget your password okay now um, contact details so I'm just going to put in Emily's details and school name don't forget your capital letters for Caroline Chisholm College and it says you must accept the terms of use to register which means that you agree um, to use these ebooks as um, under the terms that Cambridge specifies. So if you want to check those out you can click that link and have a read of that. Um, I've already read them so I'm going to just go on and hit continue at this point. Okay. Oop, and it says I need to put a security question in. And it also tells me my password must have a minimum of six characters. That's okay. I can add a sixth character. And I'm gonna I'm just gonna put this in. Okay, I'm gonna say I think where were you born? I'm gonna say Sydney. Okay, but I'll make sure that Emily changes this question for security reasons. So I'm gonna hit continue. Okay. And it says, please confirm that your email address is correct. This is really important, this step, because at this point, you've got to ask yourself, have I spelt it correctly? Is, am I sure that this is my email address? Uh, you know, is there a 2 or a 3 at the end of it that I need to put in? Um, or is this correct? Now, if it's a mistake, you just, you just fix it, okay? If it's correct, I'm going to click that one, and then we'll proceed. Okay, thank you. You're almost there. This is great. Remember, teachers, if you need to pause, just hit the pause button. Okay, a confirmation email message has been sent to your email account. To activate your Cambridge Go account, follow the instructions in the email. 
Note, if you do not receive the confirmation email, please email us. Alright, so at this point, where do I need to go? I definitely need to go to my Carol and Chisholm College email, which I'm going to do. I am already logged in as Emily, and um, I'm going to go and check her email to see that it's come through. Okay, so I'm switching over to my other browser, and look, okay, in her email, she's now got this one from Cambridge Go, okay? And it looks like it's a confirmation email. So I'm going to click this email and have a read of it. Registering with Cambridge Go. Your account has been created. To activate your account, open the following link. Okay, if you're unable to click the link, simply copy and paste it into your web browser. Okay, so I can click on that. And um, this is going to activate my account. Now that word activate means get it working okay so the account doesn't work at the moment and I need to click this link so that it will work I'm going to click that and it looks like in the next screen that comes up it's going to tell me that it's now active okay and this is fantastic because I can now log in okay now when you log in you're going to log in with your email so I'm logging in with e Baxter at Caroline Chisholm dot NSW .edu.au and I'm going to put her password in and I'm going to log in. You can see it's not that complicated, right? Okay, but there's a bit of a step that I've got to put in here, okay? I need my books. At the moment I haven't got my books and I particularly need this Cambridge um, Language Toolkit. Now, what I need to do, let's have a look, let's read the page and see if we can work it out. My Resources houses your digital resources and support material on Cambridge Go. How do I add resources? If you've purchased a textbook with Cambridge Go material, an interactive textbook or a digital option, enter your access code on the right. Okay, now I did purchase this book, didn't we? Oh, well, we all did. Cambridge Go. So what I need to do is I need to activate that as a new resource. Okay, enter your access code on the right. Now, the right's over here. So it looks like I'm going to enter in a code over here. Your access code can be found in the front of the textbook or inside the sealed pocket, and your resources will display here on the My Resources page. Okay, so looks like now I need to go to my little bit of cardboard and I need to enter in the code. So I'm going to go and have a look at Emily's cardboard and enter in her code so that I can access this new resource. So we've got, I'm going to just put in hers and you need to put your own one in. So please put your own code in. Don't do what I'm doing at this point because you need to make sure you check your cardboard and add your own one. Okay, so make sure that I do it right and I do need to do it all capital letters as well so um, I'm going to do all of that I'm going to hit activate and it looks like oh brilliant okay it says activation successful new resource added so Cambridge Toolkit 1 and this is the book okay that we've we've purchased and now I've got it in the language toolkit section here so I can actually click this one now and I've now got access to this book. Okay, and the first tab here just tells me about it. So I'll have a read of that so that I understand this. And it says Language Toolkit builds students' language and literacy skills through reading, viewing, listening, speaking, writing, and creating, which is great. This is going to really help me for NAPLAN. Um, it says resources available free to users, teacher support material. Okay, now that's not us, we're students, so we'll leave that for the teachers. So it's also available separately and electronic versions available separately. You can input your answers, you can take notes, you can bookmark pages and you can print. So the electronic access code can be purchased. Now we've already done this, okay, so what I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to click electronic version and I'll just zoom out so we can have a little look here. It says, here we go, the electronic version access code is... Uh, which we've done. You are entitled to download and store this PDF textbook, however it may not be transferred to another party. Okay, so this is telling me that I can use the PDFs here, but I can't give them to other people, because unless those people have paid for their own one, I'm actually breaking copyright. Okay, so this is really important that I don't go and make copies of this for everyone. Um, I need to just keep it to myself, 
um, and I want to just do that okay now it says here PDF chapters and there's a whole bunch of them and these are all PDF files now I want to download these so I'm going to zoom out here and what I'm going to do is I want to download them to a folder on my desktop so what I'm going to do I'm going to click on preliminary pages and it says your download will begin automatically in five seconds okay and there it is and it's it's in downloads okay and that's downloaded there it is okay um, and it's opening up at this point okay great so now it's opened up and I can at this point save it to another place okay now I think what's important here is that um, it's downloaded the which section have I got I better check okay I'll just make sure close that window close this window and it looks like I've just downloaded the preliminary pages section that's the the bit at the front of the book and so I've now got that sitting open as a PDF file here okay so what I think I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to save this to a folder on my desktop okay so I'm going to go file save as and I'm going to put it into the desktop but I'm actually going to make a new folder okay and I'm going to go I'll call this um, language toolkit oh, okay and I'm going to type create there so now I'm in this folder that's on the desktop and I've called it language toolkit and what I'm going to do is I'm going to save all of these PDF files to this folder but when I save them I'm going to make it sure that so I've got a name that I can actually remember okay now the section that I'm saving at the moment is the preliminary section okay it's the section at the start oh, you can even put it in brackets section at start and I'm going to put dot PDF okay and I'm going to save great I've now got that section sitting in that folder so I can close this and I can then go to unit one which is interviews so I'll open this up now and it's downloading which is great and it's going to open up in PDF reader in a second there it is and it's, it's I'm going to save that save as and I'm going to go to my new folder that I've made it's called language toolkit there it is click click okay and this is unit one so I'm going to call this unit one dot PDF I'm going to hit save that's great now I've done that so I can close that and I can close this window and I can go to unit two okay and you'll get used to this after a while it's, it takes a little bit of time unit two is downloading unit two is now opening up and I'm going to go file save as I'm going to go into my folder my language toolkit folder which is on the desktop and I can see so far I've done preliminary and unit one so I'm going to now save this one as unit two dot PDF save I'm going to do one more for you and then um, I want you to continue on doing this yourself okay remember to give it a good name when you're saving it so that you can understand later which one it is so I'll close these windows I don't need these for now I'm going to go to unit three okay it's going to download in a few seconds it's downloading now it's opening up I'm going file I'm going save as I'm going into the folder which I already am oh no I'm not I'm going to desktop I'm going to language toolkit I'm calling this one unit three dot PDF I'm going save I've done unit three I'll just do one more just in case you're still working this out you can watch me doing unit four okay so click unit four you'll get quite good at this after a while trust me it's downloading it's opening file save as go to the desktop click on language toolkit folder I'm up to unit 4 unit 4.pdf save okay
Fantastic. All right. You can do the rest in your own time. Okay, and that's great that you know how to do this because you want to get all of them done. Now the good news is I can actually close all these windows and now I've got this language toolkit folder sitting there and I can go and grab that whole folder and I can just put it on a USB drive. I can email that to myself if I want to. Um, I've got this now. This is something that I own and it's my textbook. Okay, so hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial and um, give me some good feedback. This has been Mr. Stevenson with Language Toolkit, PDF style. Thank you.